welcome to Cici This Week. I'm Mary Lee. It's good to have you with us. Coming up, New Jersey Cici volunteers conduct a disaster assessment in Ewing to help local residents recover from a gas explosion. Talent team of doctors take the rare opportunity to pass on their medical skills to Jordan team of members. And we meet Indonesian Cici volunteer Tio Li Li and her family of 18 who also walks the Cici path. <laughs> In the United States, on March 4th, a gas explosion at New Jersey's Ewing Township injured seven and killed one person, while affected at least 55 households. After the explosion, New Jersey City volunteers arrived at the explosion site to conduct a disaster assessment. On March 4th, a massive gas explosion at Ewing Township of New Jersey killed one person, injured seven, and damaged at least 55 homes. According to the police, the workers of a private company struck the gas line, which triggered the gas explosion at a residential complex. Fortunately, the explosion occurred around 1 o'clock when not many people were at home. 24 hours following the gas explosion, as New Jersey City volunteers arrived to conduct a disaster assessment, many residents have been granted permission to go home and gather their belongings. And we've been in the house. Um, we were able to get some, you know, essentials, medications, a few clothes, um, dog, you know, dog food, very important. Taking pictures of what is left of their homes, many residents hope to use these photos for future reference. I, I want I want to know whether or not this is going to be a short-term situation or a long-term situation. Short-term, I can you know I can deal with pretty easily. Long-term is going to take a lot of planning. Seeing the devastation of the gas explosion, a local resident whose house only suffered minor damage decided to help his neighbors. Um, we plan on trying to help our neighbors as much as possible. We have some baby clothes that uh, don't fit our, our daughter anymore and uh, try to help out. To return the neighborhood to normal as quickly as possible, the cleaning crew work around the clock to clear away debris. A raid tag is put on houses that suffered extensive damage and no longer inhabitable. As far as where the residents are, they're kind of scattered all over. Uh, you know, they're with relatives or in a hotel. We're trying to get them all together and give them some clarity on what, as to what's moving forward. After a thorough disaster assessment, in the days and weeks ahead, CG volunteers promise to do what they can to help these survivors return their lives to normal. In Jordan, as part of their continuous care for Syrian refugees, on February 25th, Taiwan's team of members went to a local nursing home to provide seniors with free dental checkups. During their stay in Jordan, Taiwan team of doctors also seized the opportunity to pass on their medical skills to Jordan team of members. At 8 in the morning, residents of a local nursing home in Jordan are waiting in the lobby to welcome city volunteers and team members from Taiwan. Today is a special day for them as they will be receiving free dental checkups. Over the past few years, doctors of the Jordan University have come to check on our residents' health on a regular basis. However, what we need most is dental care. When our residents learned Taiwan's doctors will be offering dental care, they were very happy. As city volunteers arrive, they thoughtfully tend to the seniors like their own family. The kind gestures touch many, including local city volunteer, Su Ai. The group of sisters who came from Taiwan, bringing their love, paying their money, their uh, time, giving us and sharing with us their love, their experience, this is what impressed me more. In fact, Taiwan's Northern District team and members are here to not only pass on their knowledge of the mobile dental clinic, but also learn the humanitarian spirit from their counterparts. It's a great experience to work with the doctors in Jordan. They are really compassionate as they are willing to dedicate themselves to the needy in local areas. It motivates us to follow suit as we also did our best to help the needy patients during our days here. This is the first time that Jordan TIMA members have had a chance to learn from their fellow volunteers from Taiwan. Through exchanges, they experienced firsthand the compassion and dedication of Taiwan's TIMA members. They were very touched and they wanted to be part of it. It's the first time for me and I'm a, I'm a lucky man to join such uh, people in such organization. Uh, they came here to help our people and it's uh, for us supposed to help you work together 
for the rest of our people here. So I'm very proud and very happy to join you on this mission. Working as one, Taiwan's team of doctors and their fellow colleagues in Jordan successfully finished several free clinics, offering Syrian refugees much-needed help through their current hardship. During Taiwan's Northern District team of members' short trip to Jordan, many free clinics were held for those suffering aches and pains. And the last free clinic of the trip was held in city volunteer Chen Chouhua's home, during which team of volunteers provided medical care to nearly 40 patients. As team our members are busy setting up the venue of the clinic, city volunteers outside are receiving Syrian refugees and settling them in the waiting area. This last free clinic is being held in the home of city volunteer Chen Chouhua. <laughs> Thanks to Tsuji, Amir Dalati finally had a chance to receive dental treatment. I'm grateful for Tsuji's assistance. Last month, I didn't get a Tsuji voucher for a supplies. However, when I come here today, they even treated my dental problem for free. I am really thankful. Countless Syrians have played to Jordan for refuge. Among them is 16-year-old Raid Abdurrahman, whose leg was severely wounded by a gunshot. Today, Tima doctor Ye Tianhao is here to tend to his wounds. Oh, grossly. <laughs> grossly. We have uh, many, many poor people here, uh, many refugees. Uh, they cannot uh, take care of their own selves. So somebody will, must take the care of them. We here in Suji will take care of them and continue us, inshallah, okay? Responding to Tsuji's medical missions in Jordan, Iraqi Dr. Zaid and his fellow colleagues also joined the volunteers' ranks. Dr. Zaid said he wants to introduce Tsuji's selfless love to more people. This organization is not recognized well as much as the size of this work so it needs to be uh, more uh, advertised and uh, more people should know so I can uh, uh, generalize the idea about helping other people. As the medical team is busy providing medical services, Tsuji volunteers meanwhile look after patients sitting in the waiting area. Some of us were cooking, some of us were cleaning, the other one was looking after the people, the other was fixing the teeth. Uh, everything with smiley faces. This is the love, this is the real love that Master Chen Yen gave the members to transfer to the whole people. During these most difficult times, thanks to the volunteers' company and assistance, these victims of war have found themselves bathed in love and attention. In 2003, the ancient city of Bam, Iran was struck by a 6.6 magnitude earthquake, which took the lives of more than 40,000 people. To help, 72 hours after the earthquake, city volunteers from Taiwan, Jordan, and Turkey flew to Iran to conduct disaster assessments and free clinics. In our next report, let's take a look back at how the volunteers overcame all obstacles to help the survivors. In 2003, a powerful earthquake struck the ancient city of Bam, Iran, leaving more than 40,000 people dead. 72 hours after the devastating tremor, a total of 11 city volunteers from Taiwan, Jordan and Turkey arrived in the hard-hit Baravad, a city in central Bam. Other than carrying the volunteers to the disaster area and transporting relief items, the volunteers' bus was also used as a mobile free clinic. At first, we didn't plan on renting a big bus, but we didn't have a choice. In the end, renting such a big bus turned out to be a good decision because most of the local residents are from a Muslim background. Muslim women need more privacy. That's why the bus was a great place for city volunteers to hold free clinics. As roads were cut off due to the quake, the mobile free clinic was unable to reach all the quake survivors. Thankfully, an ambulance driver decided to drive the volunteers to a refugee camp, which was also in need of the volunteers' help. While serving the quake survivors, volunteers also had to look after their own safety, as some residents in desperate need of aid supplies attacked the bus. 
To further help those in greater need, volunteers set up three tents at the temporary command center. Despite the extreme cold weather and hardship, volunteers never complain, but focus on their goal of helping quick survivors return their lives to normal as soon as possible. In China, Cixi volunteer in Fujian's Quanzhou have had great success in spreading environmental concepts. Last year, Quanzhou's recycling volunteers managed to collect over 1,100 tons of recyclables. Meanwhile, in Shanghai and Dongguan, community members also got a hands-on experience in recycling work. On this rainy day, Cixi volunteers in Shanghai expected the turnout would be light. However, it was quite the opposite. A few new faces also joined them today. One business brought the recyclables they collected after their move to the recycling point. Since last year, city volunteers have visited this commercial building twice a month to collect recyclables. Moving to Guangdong's Dongguan, volunteers are helping to clean up the planet one pile at a time. Although unfamiliar with sorting, even children pitch in to help. Getting hands-on experience, these young citizens learn to separate items down to the smallest category. I stuck together the bubble wrap and newspapers for recycling. By coming here, I've realized the importance of environmental protection. If everyone just picked up one piece of garbage on the street and threw it in the trash, then our city could be more beautiful. A field trip to the Recycling Education Center is a chance for parents and students to get hands-on experience in environmental protection. In Fujian's Quanzhou, environmental protection ideals are practiced not only in remote villages, but in cities as well. Among those sorting recyclables is 93-year-old Su Ban. There are many seniors here to keep me company. Those over 60 set an example for others to follow, as the more they do, the healthier their bodies become. This couple collects recyclables together, united in their efforts as well as their hearts. Every day he rides his bike to pick up recyclables. I also collect as well. At my age, I feel happy to be able to still join this big family. This is the seventh year city volunteers in Quanzhou have promoted their message of environmental protection. Now with 54 recycling points and thousands of recycling volunteers, last year Quanzhou volunteers collected 1,100 tons of recyclables. When I sort recyclables, my worries disappear, and I am filled with Dharma joy. Thanks to the recycling volunteers, young and old, our planet's resources are saved for another day. In Taiwan's New Taipei City, a monthly gathering was held at the Wugu Recycling Station, where volunteers gathered to thank one another for their dedication over the past year. Then, in China, Tianjin City volunteers joined the Baodif Temple Fair to introduce environmental concepts to fairgoers. The Baodif Temple Fair in China's Tianjin is an event that has more than a thousand years of history. However, over the years, the Temple Fair has been forgotten by many. Luckily, the locals have worked to bring the tradition back, and this year, the fair drew nearly a hundred thousand people. So many people, however, meant an enormous amount of garbage. Thankfully, a group of volunteers were on site to pick up litters carelessly thrown away by fairgoers. I realized that picking up litter is not an easy job. Before, I used to litter carelessly, and my action probably caused a lot of trouble for the recycling volunteers. In the future, I will not litter carelessly and will make sure to put my garbage in the trash can. In the future, I hope we can help our planet return to its original color, 
which was filled with blue and green. To encourage more people to join the volunteers' ranks, this year the organizer of the fair made a place for city volunteers so that they could spread the NGO's environmental messages to visitors. I hope more people can walk the city path and practice recycling. Together we can transform Baudi district into a place that is clean and tidy. Knowing the importance of safeguarding our Mother Earth, despite the cold weather, volunteers seize every opportunity to encourage even goers to practice recycling. While in Taiwan, recycling volunteers at the Tsuji Ugu Recycling Station in New Taipei City are holding another monthly gathering. Following along with the volunteer sign language is 85-year-old Tsuji volunteer Ling Chen Shouqing. The volunteers always looked out for my safety and make sure I don't fall. I am very grateful. I always felt closer to the volunteers than my own son. During the event, a choir made up by senior volunteers sings to entertain the attendees. It feels different if you are expecting to be paid or receive something in return. You will find that you are extremely happy when you can give without asking for anything in return. In the days and weeks ahead, these recycling volunteers promise to continue safeguarding our Mother Earth. In our next report, we meet Indonesian city volunteer Diu Li Li, who decided to join the Buddhist NGO after watching Dai TV 12 years ago. Thanks to her efforts of encouraging others to join her, 18 members of her family are now walking the city path together. This is city volunteer Diu Li Li's family. Except for her aunt, everyone has a volunteer uniform. 12 years ago, while staying at a hospital, Julie Lee came across the Dai TV and soon after vowed to join the Buddhist NGO. Her first city activity was helping out at a free clinic. The first city event I volunteered at was at a free clinic held in Surabaya. The experience taught me to be grateful and cherish my blessings. Inspired by today's philosophy, since then, Jolie Lee has encouraged her family members to walk the city path. After joining city's rice distributions, I've realized that I'm much better off than a lot of people. I need to be grateful. My aunt kept telling me about the city foundation, and I felt awkward at first. Later on, I decided to Google the organization to learn more about it. At first, I felt it wasn't necessary to join Siji because I was so young. I told myself, as long as I don't do bad deeds, it's okay. However, after watching Dai TV, I realized that I was wrong. Thanks to Dio Li Li, Ziji has become an important part of this family. To show his support, Dio's brother-in-law even provided a space for volunteers to practice recycling. If we didn't have a place to sow recyclables, I think it would be hard for us to spread Ziji in Kisarang. Following Dio's footsteps, Dio's sister-in-law and her husband decided to become media volunteers documenting Ziji's missions in Medan. We have become the master's ears and eyes. I am extremely moved. Despite his old age, Jill's uncle is very supportive of Tsuji's work. As long as I have the strength, I will continue to do Tsuji. Although suffering from a foot injury, Jill's aunt promises to join the volunteers' ranks as soon as she recovers. When I recover from my foot injury, I want to practice recycling and volunteer. With determination, nothing is impossible, and in the future, this family of 19 promises to walk on the Bodhisattva path hand in hand. Overseas city volunteers are an important part of spreading city's ideals to non-Chinese speakers. In New Jersey of the United States, a group of city academy students and city volunteers visited a nursing home, while city volunteers in Auckland, New Zealand, helped introduce the Buddhist NGO's missions to Hindus living down under.
Here at the Tsuji New Zealand chapter, over 20 Hindu seniors are on a visit to gain a better understanding of Tsuji's missions and ideals. Strolling through different parts of the office and browsing Tsuji's environmental products and publications, the seniors, averaging 80 years of age, come to realize that the world is full of stories they have yet to hear. South Auckland's Community Development Senior Facilitator, Nimi Bidi, chose to visit Tsuji as she feels it's a place where people don't discriminate against race and lessons on environmental protection can be learned. And the second thing which I really uh, like others to get the motivation and get motivated and rejuvenated is the environmental sustainability that Tsuji Foundation is working towards via the recycling, the resource recovery center here. At the end of their visit, the seniors receive a bamboo coin bank so that they too can start contributing their love. Meanwhile, students of the Tsuji Academy in New Jersey are helping residents of the JFK Hardwick Nursing and Rehabilitation Center find a bit of warmth among the biting cold of this winter. The students showcase their talents in playing various musical instruments or performing traditional Chinese dance routines, wowing their nursing home residents. It's been great and very comforting. I feel the seniors have been happy to see us. Hearing familiar songs, residents wave their arms in time with the melody. Despite the wind and snow outside, it seems that Tsuji volunteers have succeeded in warming the hearts of every resident here today. Every year, the Tsuji Kindergarten in Indonesia's Kaput Village holds its annual Humanitarian Week, during which Tsuji's humanitarianism, charitable and environmental ideals are passed on to the children through interactive games and activities. Waiting in a neat line, these students of the Tsuji Kindergarten in Kaput Village are about to begin a tour of their local Jingsi Hall. During their humanitarian week visit, the students are given an introduction to Tsuji's history, as well as its signature bamboo banks. I'm counting coins. This money is for those in need. We will take the accumulated money and donate it to those in need, such as the victims of earthquakes or those affected by the recent volcanic eruptions. The children embrace the lessons on charity, humanitarianism and, of course, environmentalism. Teachers at the kindergarten came up with some simple games to teach students how to actualize recycling concepts in their lives. The craft materials we used are recycled paper and newspapers, then the children painted them. With the activities over, the children next take time to serve their family members a cup of tea. I gave them massage and brought them food and drinks. Teaching their students how to be more caring, compassionate and environmentally conscious is the goal of the school's annual humanitarian week, and it looks like this year's event was another rousing success. At the end of the show, we go to Singapore where Tima and Minds held their annual dental free clinic. Minds is a charity organization that helps those with mental disabilities in the country. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. See you next week.